time in seven seasons, the San Antonio Spurs are the NBA champions. Set to tick off, San Antonio is back on top once again. The Spurs are the 2014 NBA champions. When you talk about dynasties in the NBA, most bring up the Boston Celtics in the 50s and 60s, the Showtime Lakers of the 80s, or the mighty Chicago Bulls of the 90s. Few bring up San Antonio, where the Spurs captured five titles between 1999 and 2014. To say they were consistent would be a massive understatement, as shown by their 22 straight playoff appearances from 1998 to 2019. Along the way, they established a blueprint for success and a culture of winning that teams today are constantly trying to emulate. This is the story behind Duncan, Robinson, Manu, Tony, and of course, Pop. The San Antonio Spurs Dynasty. San Antonio has always been synonymous with winning. Since the NBA and ABA merger in 1976, the Spurs have only missed the playoffs in six seasons, and each era of Spurs basketball has built on top of the other. From 76 to 85, George the Iceman Gervin led the Spurs to two conference finals trips before falling to the eventual champion Lakers. Just an FYI, the Lakers show up a lot in this story. After trading Gervin to the Bulls in the summer of 85, the Spurs had some difficult years, including posting losing records in consecutive seasons, which other franchises might view as routine, but it earned them the number one overall pick in the 1987 draft, where they selected the Admiral David Robinson from the United States Naval Academy. The San Antonio Spurs select David Robinson from Navy. The Spurs then hired legendary Kansas coach Larry Brown in 1989, who brought along with him one of his assistant coaches from Kansas, a former captain in the U.S. Armed Forces, Greg Popovich. A new era of Spurs basketball was just around the corner. Robinson's tenure as the Lone Star in San Antonio was successful, but also frustrating. He unanimously won Rookie of the Year in 1990 and won MVP in 1995, but ultimately the Spurs never made the NBA Finals. There were many factors as to why Robinson's Spurs never reached the summit. Robinson's health was one of them, but they had yet to establish their now trademark cultural consistency, changing coaches four times between 1990 and 1996. Ownership also changed hands in 1993. That all changed when Popovich, then the acting GM, appointed himself head coach just 18 games into the 96-97 season, a move that was scrutinized by the media who thought Pop's ego was taking over, and he didn't exactly knock it out of the park. Robinson had suffered a back injury in preseason, which kept him out for a month, only for him to return for six games before breaking his foot and being ruled out for the rest of the season. The Spurs finished 20 and 62, the worst record in franchise history. But just like in 1987, when the Spurs found some luck in the lottery, the San Antonio Spurs will pick first in the 1987 NBA draft. They would do the same in 1997, and this time, it would change the franchise forever. The San Antonio Spurs select Tim Duncan from Wake Forest University. Landing the number one overall pick in the 97 draft, the Spurs selected Wake Forest product and consensus All-American Tim Duncan. Popovich knew what the Spurs had while watching Duncan in Summer League, saying if I try to coach this guy, the only thing I can do is screw him up. Side note, Duncan was seriously considering pursuing swimming instead of basketball at some point, so there's an alternate universe where the big fundamental became the next Michael Phelps instead of the greatest power forward of all time. Anyways, Duncan was as good as advertised. He won Rookie of the Year, averaging 21 points and 11 rebounds alongside Robinson, and the two became known as the Twin Towers. In the 99 lockout shortened season, the Spurs, led by the two towering big men, won an NBA best 37 games. The team was just as dominant in the Western Conference playoffs, steamrolling through teams and giving us one of the craziest game winners of all time to advance to the franchise's first NBA Finals. Into Sean Elliott. He fires the three. To no one's surprise, the Spurs demolished the 8th seeded New York Knicks in 5 games to earn the franchise's first NBA championship, with the second year player Duncan winning finals MVP. You'd think that would be cause for some serious celebration afterwards, right? Nope. The Spurs spent the plane ride back to San Antonio playing StarCraft on their laptops. 
A knee injury to Duncan at the tail end of the 99-2000 season prevented the Spurs from repeating, which was a missed opportunity because in the coming years, they'd butt heads with another brewing dynasty. Remember when I said the Lakers would be a big part of the story? Well, this is where the rivalry begins. While Duncan was earning his reputation as one of the game's best big men, there was another towering force, an immovable object who just won his first championship, Shaquille O'Neal. O'Neal and Robinson had their own rivalry, airing grievances in the media. The two had battled it out for the 1994 scoring title before Robinson sealed the award with a 71-point showing on the last day of the season. But by 2000, Robinson was inching closer to the end of his career, leaving the door open for Duncan to take on the task of playing Shaq's nemesis. Duncan and Shaq represented two very different sides of basketball culture. Shaq was flashy, braggadocious. He rapped. He starred in movies. Whereas Duncan dressed like this and didn't really care for the noise or outside attention. Most may not recall that Duncan was potentially going to leave the Spurs in the summer of 2000 to sign with Shaq's former team, the Orlando Magic, but ended up re-signing with the Spurs because Magic head coach Doc Rivers wouldn't let players' families onto the team playing. Uh, someone in Tim's entourage, I'll just yes. leave it that way, asked Doc, can significant others travel on the plane? And Doc said no. Are you going to make it through the rest of the show, Tracy? You're gonna... I, I, I really don't like it. <laughs> Shaq and Duncan's on-court duels turned out to be somewhat lopsided to start. In 2001, it was Shaq who swept Duncan and the Spurs on the way to back-to-back -to -back titles for the Lakers. In 2002, Duncan won his first MVP trophy during the regular season, but Shaq bested Duncan again, this time in five games, despite Duncan scoring 34 points and grabbing 24 rebounds in Game 5. In that summer, the Spurs front office, led by GM R.C. Buford, went to work to ensure that they would be ready for the next Lakers-Spurs battle. They signed Steven Jackson and traded for Steve Kerr again to add even more shooting to a team that already had Bruce Bowen and Steve Smith. And more importantly, two of their young prospects began to bloom. Second-year French star Tony Parker, who was drafted in 2001, assumed the role of starting point guard. Alongside him in the backcourt, 57th overall pick in the 1999 draft, Manu Ginobili, finally made his way to the NBA after spending the previous three seasons playing professionally in Italy. The Spurs won 60 games in the 2002-2003 season with that revamped roster, owning the best record in the West. Duncan took home his second straight MVP trophy, and Popovich won his first Coach of the Year award. The Spurs slayed their playoff demons, defeating the Lakers in six games in the West Semis, with Duncan outdueling Shaq with 37 points, 16 rebounds, and two blocks in Game 6. In their second NBA Finals in five seasons, they defeated Jason Kidd's New Jersey Nets in six games to win their second NBA title. Duncan once again took home Finals MVP with a ridiculous stat line of 24 points, 17 rebounds, five assists, and five blocks per game. With Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker now leading the charge, it was time to say goodbye to the Admiral. One of the greats we get a chance to say goodbye to tonight, David Robinson, thank you. With Robinson retired, San Antonio had a huge void in a locker room that was built on stability and continuity. They struggled through the 2003-2004 season, and despite being up 2-0 to the Lakers in the second round, lost four straight games to Shaq, Kobe, and Derek Fisher? Here they go. They get it to Fisher. He scores! Oh, Derek good, Fisher good. scores at the buzzer! It'll have to be reviewed. They'll review it. They'll review it. The Lakers are going to run to the dressing room and they'll try to get on the plane before the officials can get over. To it didn't take long for the Spurs to regain their footing, though. The key to Popovich's success was getting full buy-in from his players, no matter what role they would play. You guys lead the way. It makes it easy for us to have everybody else follow. It's a huge part of why things work the way they do. I think we, we all valued our relationship, we all understood our roles. We never wanted more. The Spurs cruised through the 2004-2005 season thanks to a revamped roster that replaced Robinson with Rasha Nesterovic and Nazir Muhammad and Jackson with Brant Barry and Robert Ory. They finished the season 59-23, and despite Duncan suffering an ankle injury towards the tail end of the season and lost just four games on their way to another NBA Finals berth, where they'd face the defending champion Detroit Pistons. 
This was probably the Spurs' hardest finals matchup to date. Games 1 and 2 were dominated by Ginobili as the Spurs took a 2-0 lead, but the Pistons blew out San Antonio in games 3 and 4. Then, in a decisive game 5 in Detroit, Robert Ori lived up to his big shot moniker. Hunter on Park. Here's Ginobili. Oh, they to Ori open. for 3. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, this guy is off the charts. Robert Ori from the Despite losing in Game 6, the Spurs managed to close out the series in 7 games and win their third title in 7 years. Duncan was once again named Finals MVP, becoming just the 4th player in NBA history to win the award 3 times. The 05-06 season saw the Spurs come out the gate flying, winning 16 of their first 19 games and finishing the season with a franchise best 63 wins, but they lost to the Mavericks in a well-fought 7 game series in the West Semis. The very next year, the playoffs would provide them arguably their biggest test. While the Spurs' continuity and consistency kept them in contention year in, year out, nobody was prepared for the seismic change the 06-07 Phoenix Suns, led by Steve Nash and coach Mike D'Antoni, were about to unleash with their 7 seconds or less offense. It was the antithesis of the Spurs' slow-paced, half-court style offense, which made for an epic clash of contrasting styles. The Spurs and Suns ultimately clashed in round 2 of the playoffs, where controversy ensued. The incident resulted in Ori being suspended for two games, but Suns players Amari Stoudemire and Boris Diaw were both handed controversial suspensions for a pivotal Game 5 for leaving the bench. The Spurs went on to win the series in six games, dismantle the Utah Jazz in the conference finals in five games, and sweep LeBron James' Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. This time, it wasn't Duncan who took home Finals MVP. It was the Spurs' all-star point guard who became the first European-born player to win the award, averaging 25 points, five rebounds, and three assists on better than 56% shooting from the field. And just like that, the Spurs had won four NBA titles in the span of eight seasons. But they were all getting older. How much longer could they sustainably win? By 2008, the Spurs core had begun to show signs of aging. Don't get me wrong, they were still winning often in the regular season. They even won 61 games in the 2010-2011 season, but an injury to Ginobili in the final game of the season contributed to a first round playoff exit at the hand of the eight seeded Grizzlies. For as good as the Spurs trio was, Ginobili and Duncan, who were now in their 30s, couldn't handle the loads they once could. The supporting cast was also past their prime. Ori, Barry, Bowen, and Finley were all in their late 30s. A youth movement was necessary for San Antonio, and Buford went to work. Popovich began giving more minutes to young talents like Danny Green, Gary Neal, and Tiago Splitter. They also added Diaw and rookie Patty Mills to the mix as well. And in the summer of 2011, the Spurs made one of the shrewdest trades in league history, though there's no way they could have known how good it would ultimately turn out. George Hill was traded to the Pacers for the 15th overall pick in the 2011 draft, which became Kawhi Leonard. The Indiana Pacers select Kawhi Leonard from San Diego State University. The team also changed how they played from an on-court perspective. Parker had become the focal point, with the team constructed to better suit his fast style of play. There was, however, trade speculation at the time involving Parker as a result of locker room drama involving a teammate and a rumored love affair. Despite that, the 2011-2012 Spurs finished tied for the best record in the NBA in the lockout shortened season. Popovich won his second Coach of the Year award. Parker finished fifth in MVP voting. The Spurs swept their way to their first conference finals since 2008. They lost in the conference finals, however, to the Thunder despite being up to nothing. A year later in 2013, they'd return to a familiar place, the NBA Finals, against the familiar foe, LeBron James. This time, however, with James as a member of the Miami Heat and coming off an MVP season. The finals were tightly contested. A back and forth affair came down to a pivotal game six in Miami with the Spurs up 3-2. San Antonio was up five points with just 28 seconds left to go. They had already brought out the Larry O'Brien trophy to present to the Spurs for their fifth championship in 15 seasons in front of the Miami crowd. And then, one of the craziest moments in NBA history. James catches, puts up the three. 
Won't go. Rebound box. Back out to Allen. History point of bang. Tie game with five seconds remaining. Spurs do not have a timeout. The Heat miraculously staved off elimination, went on to win Game 7 in San Antonio to become back-to-back -back champs. After the finals, Popovich was criticized for his decision to sub out Duncan for the final seconds of Game 6, with many saying that Bosch wouldn't have gotten the rebound. Popovich and the Spurs would answer those criticisms the following season, winning a league-best 62 games, landing Pop his third Coach of the Year award. The 2014 Spurs are synonymous with some of the most beautiful basketball ever played, an unselfish, offense-by-committee approach that was hard to stop on any given night. The third-year forward Leonard was beginning to come into his own, especially as a defensive stopper, and that would prove important when the Spurs returned to the finals against the same Heat team, and this time, it wasn't all that close. The Spurs dominated to beat the Heat in five games, with Leonard leading the way and imposing his will on James defensively. He became the third youngest player to win finals MVP behind Magic Johnson and his own teammate Duncan. The Spurs trophy case had grown to five championships in the span of 16 seasons. San Antonio hasn't reached the NBA finals since, but it wasn't a dramatic drop off. They won a franchise best 67 games in 2015-2016 with the emergence of Leonard and the acquisition of all-star forward LaMarcus Aldridge in the offseason. Duncan retired in the summer of 2016 as one of the greatest players of all time. Ginobili retired two years after that, and Parker opted to sign with the Charlotte Hornets as the team began to rebuild around Leonard and Aldridge. As it turns out, Leonard also wasn't long for San Antonio. The team won 61 games in the 2018 season, but was derailed by a Kawhi injury in Game 1 of the West Finals. As a result of the injury, communication began to break down between Leonard and the Spurs organization. In a blockbuster move, a disgruntled Leonard was traded to the Raptors in the summer of 2018 in exchange for DeMar DeRozan, Jakob Pertl, and a future first-round pick. Leonard ended up leading the Raptors to a championship in his one and only season there. Just like that, the Spurs dynasty was over. But the legacy lives on. Duncan is widely accepted as the greatest power forward in NBA history. Robinson is also in the Hall of Fame. Pop will join them, as should Ginobili and Parker. No three teammates have ever won more playoff games than Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker. Five NBA championships between 1999 to 2014, and 22 straight playoff appearances from 98 to 2019. And the Popovich coaching tree now extends its excellence throughout the league, including Bucks championship coach Mike Budenholzer, Warriors championship coach Steve Kerr, Jazz head coach Quinn Snyder, Grizzlies head coach Taylor Jenkins, Celtics head coach Ime Udoka, Hornets head coach James Borrego, among many others. The Spurs way is something that many organizations have tried to replicate, but it is rarely as successful. When asked why their recipe worked, Popovich gave this simple yet insightful answer. I think our success over the years is in large part due to continuity, he says. Synergy between ownership and management and coaches is rare because in most organizations, there's always friction of one sort or another. In a sport that so often seems to focus on the individual, the superstar, the super team, the Spurs instead focused on cohesion from the bottom all the way to the top of the organization. Will we ever see anything like it again? Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.